Today I'm going to be sharing how I made this macrame pouch for storing sunglasses. This is a great beginner project because it involves a lot of repetition with the knots and it's also great because it's just a functional item that you can use every day or give as a gift. Feel free to pause the screen here to get a better look at the materials or you can find them below in the description. Cut the first string to 60 inches or 5 feet in length and lay it out across the top of your working surface. Cut another 8 strings to 12 foot lengths. One by one, attach them to the center of the first string by using reverse lark's head knots. Once all eight strings are attached, pin or tape the tops in place so that they'll stay put as you work. Tie four square knots across the top of the project, working in groups of four strings at a time. Tie a second row of three alternating square knots. This means that for each square knot, you will use two cords from two adjacent knots in the row above. There will also be two strings hanging loose on each side. That's okay for now. We're going to reattach them in the following row. Next row will have four square knots again, so start with the outer four strings tying a square knot and continue tying a row of alternating square knots. Continue adding rows of square knots, remembering to switch between rows of three and four. Once the project has reached a length of at least 15 inches, we are finished with the repeating rows of square knots. I'm going to finish the end in a V-shape, so to start that, I'm going to create one more row of three square knots. After the row of three square knots is complete, create another row underneath using only two square knots.
Next, finish off the V-shape by using the four center cords to create one final square knot. Now that most of the repetitive knotting is done, I'm going to remove the pins and the cork board so that the project is a little bit easier to move around in the following steps. Pick up the bottom portion of the project and flip it underneath so that it's folded almost in half. You're going to leave a little bit of the space or most of the V shape on top because that is going to be the part that wraps around the front. Flip the top back over to the front. Next, I'm going to tie a row of clove hitch knots to accentuate the V shape. So take the outermost cord on the left hand side and point it inward over the rest of the cords. Then use the rest of the cords as working cords to tie clove hitch knots around the lead cord. Repeat this step on the opposite side, so tie another row of clove hitch knots using the outermost string on the right hand side. Next I'm going to give a quick trim to all of the loose hanging cords so that they are easier to comb out in the future step. To form the seam on one side of the pouch, I'm threading one end of the anchor string through a tapestry needle. Then flip the project on its side and thread through the first stitch that you see on the opposite side of where you pulled the string from. Next, align the rows of knots so that you can thread through two stitches at the same time. Make sure to pull tight so that it's secure and then find the next row of knots and push the needle through that row. Continue in this method until you have reached the end of the seam. Once the seam is complete, I am using the tapestry needle to weave in the remaining loose end of the string so that it's secured inside of the pouch. Pull the string through and once it's all the way pulled through, you can also take an extra step just to secure it. So what I'm doing is tying a simple overhand knot and I'm pushing that knot as close to the inside corner of the bag as I can. Repeat the same process on the opposite side to complete both seams. This next step is optional, but it does give a more polished look, so I'm taking a comb and just gently working out the fringe at the end of the pouch. make 
sure to brush out both sides to ensure that the fringe is perfectly combed out. Once the fringe is fully combed out, I'm taking my scissors and cutting in small sections at a time, following the V-shape of the knots. That's it for this tutorial. Another optional step you could add is sewing on a button clasp or a closure to make sure that this top stays in place. But that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Perfect.